What we're going to be going over in this example here is a non-condom balancing accounting error here where we have the failure to capitalize and record depreciation expense on some equipment that we purchased. And for example here, we uh, failed to record the equipment as a capital asset here and depreciate it. But what we had done here is the entire cost of this equipment here, $20,000, was expensed when it was purchased here in year 20X1. So what we have here is we would have had our cash account here, it credited, reduced it uh, for a piece of equipment here by $20,000, the purchase price here, and then we went over to our uh, expense here on our income statement for the equipment, we'd have debited it here for $20,000. Now. What we should have done here is uh, set this up as a capital asset and we would have taken the depreciation per year and recognized that as expense or an income statement. Would we recognize the entire cost of that piece of equipment has expense here, as expense item. So we debited it here. So at the end of the year, what we would do is we would credit it out here or take and move our expense over into retained earnings here on the balance sheet here. And so what that would have done here is we'd have taken the entire expense here at $20,000 of credit here, and it would have gone into retained earnings as a debit here or a reduction in our retained earnings by $20,000. So what in fact is the retained earnings would be understated by the amount of that purchase price here that we expensed out less any depreciation that we would have had for the year here. So this is what we have to deal with here. So let's go down now and let's look at how we make the correction here. Assume that we use straight line depreciation and it had a five year service life here on this piece of equipment. So our depreciable cost here, simply our book value minus our salvage value. And we'll just say the book value here is the purchase price at $20,000 and say that a zero salvage value so depreciable cost is going to be 20000 here. Divide that by the service life here, five years. So that's going to give us $4,000 per year here depreciation. Okay, so let's go down now and let's look at how we'd make this correction. And we're going to say, for example, here, the air was found here in year X2, one year after we made the purchase of this piece of equipment. And we're going to have to correct it in year X2 here. Okay, so let's look at what's going on here now. We're going to look at the case here where we make the correction here in year X2, and then we'll also look at the case where the books were closed here in year X2 and how we'd make that correction. Okay, so first thing we have to do here is we have to set up this equipment account here, five-year life here, and we have to capitalize the cost of the equipment here uh, uh, for $20,000 here. That would be the asset here in a balance sheet. And then we have to look at our accumulated depreciation here, and we're going to have to look at uh, we found the error here in year X2, so we're going to have to include both the first year's depreciation that we would have had to recognize here and also the second year's depreciation. So what do we had? We had 4000 here per year depreciation cost times two years here. That's going to give us $8,000 or credit. Our increase our accumulated depreciation here on our balance sheet by $8,000, which reduces our equipment value here by the amount of our depreciation. Okay, so we've taken care of that. Okay, so now what we have to do, the other correcting entry we have to make here is we have to recognize the depreciation expense here in income statement for the current year, year two here. That would have been that $4,000 here. So, okay, so we've recognized that here. Now the other thing we have to do is we have to make our correcting entry here to our retained earnings here. So it was understated by the total $20,000 worth of purchase, that the price that we paid here because that expense was closed uh, in year X1 here to the retained earnings, but we also would have had to recognize our depreciation for the year here of $4,000. So in effect here for a year, uh, we made that first year correction here, uh, year X1 corrected in year X2 here, we really have to, our retained earnings was understated only by 16,000 here. So we had the 20,000 here of the purchase price here, less the $4,000 worth of depreciation that we would have recognized here for year X1. So understated, retained earnings was understated by 16,000. So we'd have to credit or increase our retained earnings here by 16,000. So those are the entries we'd have to make. Capitalize your equipment here for the price of the equipment here, 20,000. Recognize your accumulated depreciation here for both years, year X1 and year X2 here of 8,000. 
take your depreciation expense here on your income statement for the current year here, year X2 of 4,000, and then the balance goes into retained earnings here, the credit or increase our retained earnings here by 16,000 because it was understated by that amount. Now, the other case is here, if the books were closed here at the end of year X2, and we'd have to, we'd have to make the entry here. So the only difference would be you'd still have your equipment capitalized here, 20,000, still have the same accumulated depreciation of 8,000 here but what you wouldn't do is you wouldn't uh, you recognize any depreciation expense here on your income statement that 4,000 here for the current year here because the books would be closed so the only adjusting entry you have to make here would be to retained earnings what you would do is you'd have to credit or increase your retained earnings here by twelve thousand dollars because you would have recognized four thousand dollars worth of depreciation well you would have recognized the total here accumulated depreciation of eight thousand dollars here but none of the four thousand would not have gone to depreciation expense you just take that extra four thousand here the total accumulated depreciation here and you would uh, credit the difference between what you had on your equipment capitalization here at 20,000 less what your correction here for those two years depreciation of 8,000 is going to give you the balance would be to credit or increase your retained earnings here by $12,000. Now that's if the books are closed here because your retained earnings would only be understated by $12,000. Okay. So the, let's just move down here for a second. Just remember here, this is a non-counterbalancing air correction here. That is, it takes more than two periods to correct the air. And it would take actually five years to counterbalance here if the correction was not made here. So if you did nothing here, uh, you wouldn't have to set up any of these accounts here, but your retained earnings would still be out of balance here are uh, understated for the next, well, the five-year life of that piece of equipment would be understated by the difference between whatever you had for your capitalized cost and whatever your accumulated depreciation would have been up to that date and time. So this is, again, a non-counterbalancing error that had to be corrected, and we looked at it where we made the correction during the year that we found the error here, and then we also made the correction what entries we'd have to make if, in fact, the books were uh, closed for the year here that we found that error are here. So that's about how we'd go here and work out this example where we miss, well, we didn't uh, capitalize a piece of equipment here or a, a piece of uh, an asset account here. We didn't capitalize it properly and depreciate it properly here uh, through the income statement. And that would have to be what we adjustment we'd have to make to retain earnings. Okay, so that'll summarize our topic.